Now, I want to talk about how the AMC crisis could lead to the total collapse of the financial system, which would force the Fed to move away from the dollar and toward the soon-to-be CBDC. I want to demonstrate that this is their intention, explain why they are so afraid of a squeeze, and talk about how a squeeze might ultimately cause the system to collapse. Let's get some money together and keep an eye on this space. I'll get straight to the accumulation process now. Frank Weedeating has said since the start of this AMC journey that they wouldn't be so keen to sell the stock if it were indeed as bad an investment as they want us to think. Remember that every seller has a buyer at the end of every transaction, he said in closing. He said that in order for us to achieve the largest profit possible, short sellers would want us to buy and hold all the way down to zero if they were to truly liquidate their positions in January and June of 2021. Is that correct? To maximize profits, they would like to hold all the way down to zero, but instead they are fixated on getting us to sell, and he said, it is clear why, because our stock has value. They would want to hold all the way down to zero if they were not constrained or genuinely wanted to close their positions. Think about this. You weren't forced to sell a worthless stock, and no one was forced to reassess their home investment in 2007 or 2008. Despite this, we are constantly under pressure to sell, because we own AMC. A good example of this, in my opinion, is how often stocks like AMC and GameStop are discussed in the mainstream media, as opposed to stocks like Nikola or Bird, which are clearly fake and should be sold. Trace tweeted that Bird's scooter's market value had formally dropped from $2.8 billion to $25 billion. The CEO and founder of the company are accused of walking away with a sizable profit after receiving an extra $700 million in startup funding. The price has decreased from $200 to $200 per share to just $2 per share over the previous two years. Charles Payne also said, This is precisely what I am referring to. With help from Wall Street, the initial public offering, IPO, was a premeditated theft. Sometimes the media told you to buy bird stock and instead sell AMC stock, trying to get you to buy a potentially fraudulent company that's down 99% and sell what could be the chance of a lifetime with AMC. Squeeze the Main Street media and Wall Street is trying to convince you to do the exact opposite of what will make you money, trying to convince you to buy fraudulent companies and trying to convince you to sell squeezable stocks like AMC. And the reason why, as this video explains, is because we're nearing the end of the current financial system, aka nearing the end of the US dollar, and we're just about to move into CBDC territory. This is why these banks are maximizing the US as much as they possibly can to make as much money on the current financial dollar system before moving and resetting again over to CBDCs when you know that your social security is about to be in the hands of someone else. And they do that so that after you get officially claimed as being bankrupted, they put the mom in, as most people would likely just go out and load up those credit cards, knowing that they never intend to pay them. These guys understand currency life cycles better than I do. These guys know the central bankers. So they know that they are at the end of the road because they use, I mean, the key tools that they use are interest rates to regulate the rate and speed of inflation. So where, where the whole world has been experiencing this very rapid and high inflation, Okay, it's because they're losing control, because they're at the end. So I'm thinking, and I could be wrong, but I don't think that they're trying to keep it going. I think that they only needed to keep it going long enough to get the next uh, system in place and controlled in enough so that they remain in power on the other side of this transition. And I hope that's not true because... I, <laughs> so as you can see, it seems like the Fed is basically utilizing all dollar cash they possibly can, maximizing the debt and spending as much as they like, but for effectively resetting to zero with a new CBDC system. That's likely because they know a crash in the current financial operating system is coming, and they're not trying to escape that coming crash. Just simply make as much money as they can before it happens. And you may ask, what event could collapse the current system where that debt is being maximized. Jackie, Jackie, what would happen to, uh, what, what if these um, zombie stocks, if they came back from the OCC market or came back from the OTC market or came back from bankruptcy or came back from a halt and ended up back in the market? Well, as Jackie said, all I know is shorts don't close when betting on bankruptcy. And if said bankrupt company doesn't die, this could be a first in history. Now, rare. I responded by saying, sure. 
Here's all the information that can be shared about the request to you, three whole MMTLP. Information comes from the BARD AI system, which evidently collects data from all across the internet to determine what happened. A market player made the request for MMTLP at 4.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on December 8, 2022. DD wrote in a tweet including the details. He claimed that the decision to suspend trade was taken just a few minutes after the request was submitted. The haul was the result of the uncertainties surrounding the settlement procedure. It is obvious that one market participant or market maker was quite close to going bankrupt, which may have led to the financial system's collapse as a whole. This tweet from Matt Wirtz is just one more element that might collapse the banking industry. It was decided to stop all business interactions as soon as the request was received. This resulted from a lack of understanding regarding the settlement procedure. This tweet claims that no one is taking into account how much these short hedge funds that hold synthetic shorts would have to pay in the event that the AMC case is settled. It's crucial to remember that after the conversion and reverse split, a settlement will be paid out in the form of one extra AMC share for every 7.5 owned AMC shares. Because of this, short hedge funds that own billions of AMC synthetics must also give one extra AMC share for every 7.5 synthetics. They will suffer a large financial loss as a result, and their fictitious short positions will gain strength. I utilize the data from before the split to estimate a price because we cannot predict how much AMC will be worth after it has occurred because the split has not yet occurred. It is clear that there were more synthetics before the split, but that each AMC share now costs less after the split. The quantity of synthetics that will be available will drop based on whether we have 2 billion or 10 billion, but AMC will cost 5 to 10 times as much as it is worth. The picture looks significantly different when you take 2 billion synthetics and divide that amount by an extra share for every 7.5 synthetics. That's a 266 million share gain. The short sellers will have to pay an extra $1.1 billion to purchase 266 million shares at the existing pre-split price of 4.40 cents per share. In the event that there are more synthetics, say 10 billion synthetics, the firm would be assigned an additional 1.3 billion shares, with one AMC share awarded for every 7.5 synthetic shares. The short sellers will need to pay an additional $5.7 billion to purchase these extra shares at a price of 4.40 cents each, or an additional 1.3 billion shares. There is little doubt that the shorts will have to find a means to make hundreds of millions of more synthetics or pay that level of money. In my opinion, things will go horribly wrong for those market makers and brokers one day, in a way similar to the issue of apes, and thousands or perhaps millions of apes worldwide will not receive their settlement AMC shares at the appropriate time. And, the biggest risk of course is that this whole thing may actually end. The prior funding arrangement, prior to the implementation of the new CBDC, Frank, also revealed that the AMC FTDs are once again running at full capacity, as seen by the failure to deliver data for the first half of June. It is clear that over the two weeks in May, a sizable portion of FTDs experienced a sharp decrease, but in the early half of June, this was reversed, and since then, FTDs have started to rise again. I think we will see even more than 18 million FTDs in a single day in the next two to four weeks. I think there will be at least 24 million, if not more, intriguingly. Frank has also tallied the number of FTDs we observed in 2021, 2022, and 2023 thus far. As you can see, we currently have even more FTDs for AMC in the first half of 2023 than we did in 2022 and 2021 combined. This is because AMC is still listed on the threshold securities list, where it appears to be establishing a permanent presence. It wouldn't surprise me if AMC remained on this threshold list for months on end, because these shorts, market makers, and regulators have no idea what to do. As always, guys, please share your thoughts in the comments section below. I believe that the shorts are having so much trouble with AMC that their only options are to either be squazed or try to use three entire AMC the same way they did MMTLP at this point.